Welcome everyone to the session on teaching AIM online with students. Um, currently I'm teaching a class myself and I thought I'd just share some ideas that I've discovered. I'm certainly no expert, but I have found a few things that have worked well for me. So I thought I would share them with you today, as well as including some other suggestions that I hope those of you who have students who already have a bit of AIM, uh, you could do with them. So let's get started. The three things that I'm going to talk about are the overall technology recommendations that I found useful um, as I've been working with the students. Uh, I'm also going to talk about um, what I do specifically for students who are brand new to the language online, because that's what I, who I've been working with, and some tips for success in that regard. And finally, some ideas for oral interactive language-centered activities for those students who you've already worked with in the past, who've developed some language proficiency. What can you do with them online? I have a few ideas there. So let's start with the overall technology recommendations. Now, I've been working on the Zoom platform, and um, <clears throat> I'm sure that other platforms may have similar um, technology uh, components, but the one that I've been working on is Zoom. And so what I recommend in that case is that students are seeing the word gallery view when they're in their Zoom meeting with you. So I have behind me, and I always show the kids, to le monde, regarde, or voir gallery view. I don't want them to click on gallery view because then it puts them in speaker view. I want them to see the words gallery view when they are in the meeting. And then I say, tout le monde regarde la vidéo de Madame Maxwell et clique sur la vidéo de Madame Maxwell. And then I have them pin the video um, after they have clicked on my video. And as you can see, this is what they should click on. I've just shown here a little screenshot of what they should click on. So this will ensure that they have the best viewing experience because you'll be the largest uh, video on screen. That's who you want them to see primarily. Of course, they will see the other students in the group, but you should be the biggest one on screen. When you are watching the students, you don't need to be the biggest on screen. So I suggest that you select and see speaker view in your view and uh, make sure that, um, yeah, that uh, all, then all the students will be equally visible to you on screen, which is exactly what you want. So um, if you are teaching students new to French, which were the, the made up the majority of the students that I had in my group, and I never met my group physically, some were in Texas, one was in Texas, one was in uh, North Carolina, several were in Ontario, some were in BC, and uh, some were in Alberta. So they were all over the place. I'll never meet them in person, which is first time I've ever experienced that. It was very interesting, but uh, there are ways to connect with the students in any case, even though online. So here are some tips for success in that area. First of all, I find that I have to slow down a lot more or I have to repeat more often. So those things, I'm taking a slower pace. I'm making sure that I'm repeating, repeating, repeating. They need a lot more training to understand that I want them all to be speaking. I use pardon, just as I do in class, extensively, but even more extensively in this case. Um, because what happens at first, I have to have the audio off for the first few hours of instruction because if they don't know any French or Spanish or the language you're teaching, then they won't be hearing your voice very well because the delay with the other students speaking will make it muffled and it won't be very clear. So it's really important that the audio is off for the most part during the first few hours. Now, when even in the first few hours, well, let's just have the screen here. So this is how I show, um, how I ask the kids to turn off and on their uh, microphones because even though at the beginning, you want to have the audio almost completely off. As soon as you see that students are something are familiar with something, for example, they understand how to do the wrap. They're becoming familiar with a wrap or um, certain simple gestures that you're doing a gesture review. You can start to turn on the audio because they don't need to be hearing you 
you are confident that they know it well enough without your support. So when you're asking them, I will just turn around and say, ouvre le microphone ou ferme le microphone. And I'll point to this and make sure that they um, just do that. And I'm watching for their microphones going on and off. And it's very quick um, in terms of the understanding of how to do this for the kids. They're so techy. They all understand <laughs> where to find their microphones and how to turn them on and off. So um, I'll have them all turn them on or I'll turn them off, as I say, for things that are very, very well known. And this can happen even in the first few hours as they start to know a rap or a kinesthetic review that's simple. So as I mentioned, for those repeated language uh, activities, such as raps, the songs, the gesture reviews, even reading the story as they become familiar with it, they don't need your vocal support or need to hear it as much. So you can have some or all of the audio on. So you can ask a few students to turn their audio on or all of the students to do it. Um, the more you have on, the more delay that can happen and, and sort of break up and, and hard to understand. But, but you also want the students to feel sort of that power that we have in the classroom where everyone is speaking together, which is very, very important. They need to feel there are other students there. They can see them but the audio is really important that they hear them as well. So do start to do that. You'll be able to test and feel what you and the students are comfortable with in terms of turning on audio. For activities that are less repetitive, that are less familiar, you can gradually, as you get into the third, fourth, fifth hour and up, of course, you can gradually ask three, two, three, four students at a time to unmute themselves. So at least there's some audio happening for all students to hear. Um, but it won't be as overwhelming as, say, a whole class. Um, and then I sandwich. I tend to sandwich a lot more in online than I do in class for the first few hours of instruction. So um, that's just something that I found useful. When I'm teaching online, I am sitting at a table with my with my little lights. I think it's very important that the kids see you very clearly. So I do light myself well. And in fact, I invite you to ask your students, send a note home to parents or directly to your students if they're older. Please light yourself, sit in front of a window or light yourselves with a little lamp or light or some type of um, lighting that will make sure the face is visible. If students' faces are dark, that's very difficult for you because as a teacher, I find that I have to rely on the students' mouths moving and their gesturing um, in order to ensure the participation of the student. If I can't see the mouth and I can't hear them, that makes it very hard. So make sure that you can see them as well as possible. Um, uh, so as you can see, here are my materials every day. I have them really handy on a desk, on, a, on, a, on the uh, table beside me. And do have fun, as much fun as possible with your students as you would in class. Be funny and silly as much as possible. Drop things, look for things, forget things. Um, you know, I go off running, say someone's, oh no, Madame Maxwell, a oublié le crayon. So I go off and I run off and then I bring back and I, oh, ou le stylo, for example, ah, trouvé, or le crayon. And I come back to the screen and, um, the kids, you know, they find that funny, they find it weird, and it, it just helps to connect you with your students, and um, I just really highly recommend it. it you want to connect with your students, whether you're in class or whether you're online, of course. And a wonderful article that I've actually posted on our AIM Facebook page, but that also I have the um, link for here, you can just uh, grab that. Um, and go have a look. It, uh, it's really nice, a uh, nice uh, list of classroom strategies that work for generating student discussions. One of them is what we always recommend, connect with your students in every way possible. So cues for participation, I did mention this briefly. Um, you're going to be uh, watching for your students' mouths moving and you're going to be watching for them gesturing. I encourage them to gesture a little more than I normally would because because they don't have the others around them, because they can't always hear everyone speaking around them, you will need other cues. So um, that will be important for you to be able to um, really see the level of participation and pardon, if they're just sitting there not talking, pardon, Christina, tout le monde parle. 
Tout le monde dit les mots. And then so you just keep reminding them and then praise them. Oh, très, très bien, Kevin. Tu dis les mots avec la classe. And so that thing that we always use, some strategies we always use in class, in live, in person class, same thing online. So how do I run a beginner class? Well, I've just been doing it the way I do an in-person class with those modifications that I mentioned before. I sing raps with the kids. I dance to the songs with the kids. I model the written activities with the kids. Um, I will model them just right here. I will have activities up. Um, we, play, we play games, whoops, we play games with the students. So I'm modeling here with the kids. We just did Meli Moano the other day. Um, so we basically just run through the act name activities in the teacher's guide, same way we would do um, in class. Um, I gesture for the kids to speak as we're doing it. Um, when we're singing the songs, I might just acapella sing it with them or do a rap acapella. There's no music. Um, I'll put on the AIM uh, portal and I'll just click on the audio and sing it with them in that way. And sometimes I share my screen and we watch the video and do it with the video or do it with the poster. All kinds of ways to do it just as we do it in class. And do try to keep it, uh, keep that variety for the kids. It's fun. Um, I, the other thing I do with the kids, I teach the words through the gestures, just as I normally would. Mais le chapeau, enlève le chapeau. I'll have the hat and ouvre le livre and I'll open a book, ferme le livre. And I'll go and write something and I'll say, écris le mot. The same activities that are in the teacher's guide, I just do it online in the same way. I introduce the story with the puppets and with the gesturing. And here's a little picture there of my puppets that I use with them. I review the story with gesturing, with puppets, with reading. At this point now, we're in lesson 17, the 17th hour. Uh, we've been doing our final uh, play practice and we've been doing an Italian, just running through the story really, really quickly um, in preparation for the students who are going to present to their parents the play and their portfolio, their online digital workbook in their portfolio. So um, yeah, same thing really. Um, we do simple games in online with the whole class. Something that the kids really love at the end of every class uh, is we do les contraires really quickly. And if I give points to the student who does the, the les contraires first. And I do that with different activities too. I do it with a gesture review, basic gesture review. Who's the first person to, to say the, uh, to do the gesture when I say the word quickly. We do it really, really fast and they love that. Um, we do the activity vrai ou faux, so they also enjoy that one. So I'll say a sentence from the, the, from the, the play or, or any sentence and, um, and the students will just say ça, c'est vrai. And I can see their gestures, they gesture it too. And so the first or second person who does it, they can get a point as well or simply just try to be the first person to do it. Um, Madame contre la classe is another one that we play. Um, a lot and so they get points. I ask questions or you can do any activity and the whole class, for example, I might ask a question of the whole class, I gesture and the whole class says it and then I will um, uh, give them points for the, when the whole class says the answer. So uh, when a few students say the answer. So you, we do have some asynchronous uh, lessons uh, created for you. So um, you can just use this URL to go have a look if you're interested. We don't have them up on our website anymore, but you can go to this URL. They're, they're still there if you're interested in having a look. Um, so for the first 12 hours or so, I just assign activities on the kit portal and the digital workbook, and they complete those activities on their own between classes. It's, I find it, I tried breakout rooms early and it was a little difficult. The kids were confused. They were difficult to follow the directions. So, um, I didn't do that right off the bat. Um, uh, however, when you have your digital workbook, it will allow you to track what the students have viewed, how many times they viewed it, how much of the book they've completed in their digital workbook. So um, it's very easy to work online with these um, digital resources. Um, it's a very easy transition, if, especially if you're working in a hybrid model or exclusively online, it's very helpful. Um, so outside of your class, 
you could also, especially with older students, you could have them do some other activities like sing a song or a rap or create a dance to one of the songs or raps or read the story and put it on their uh, uh, iPhone and send it to you. Um, they're not interactive activities, but there's some things that for older students you could require as part of something that they're doing to show you that they're actually practicing elements of the AIM kit. Um, so now we've come to ideas for oral interactive language centered activities. So as students gain experience with the methodology, you might want to have them do some other activities. So some of those activities um, are very creative and some are less creative, but the most important thing is to keep it as simple as possible. We want students to be successful. So um, there are opportunities in Zoom and I think on the other platforms as well for breakout rooms. And once your students, especially if you had them do partner group activities before and you set your expectations of the target language only and you know they can handle these things, they know exactly what is involved, you can use breakout rooms easily to have the students go and rehearse the story or do whatever you normally would do in their partner group activities. So they can have um, their, their on, a, on a separate device, they can have their partner group activities uh, digital workbook up online and they can be doing that together. Um, there's a tutorial here uh, that will show you if you don't know how to use breakout rooms um, that uh, that may be helpful. It certainly was helpful to me in learning how to do it. And um, so breakout rooms can also be done outside of class time. You don't have to use class time for breakout rooms. You can tell kids, well, between um, now and the next class, I want you to meet with your assigned partner and um, you don't have to use the breakout rooms in that case, I should say. You can just have them meet and uh, do an activity together. Now in breakout rooms, you can actually film, have them film their, um, their room and send it to you so that you're ensuring that they are using the target language only for the whole time. Um, what you do is you randomly select or selectively place to it. Sorry, you randomly just assign. You can just have the system assign or you can um, specifically select two or three students in a room and you can jump into any room at any time um, to visit the class. You can bring everyone back to the main room at any time, and you can determine the number of seconds warning they're given um, before bringing them back. So um, it's a really nice way to get kids to have that opportunity to work with each other. And as I mentioned before, you can have the students film their um, time in the breakout room. You can't be in all rooms at once, so you do want to be sure they're using the target language only. So having them film it will ensure, will put the little pressure on them to make sure that they are um, in fact using target language only. Um, <clears throat> so some of the breakout room simple activities, well, they go off into breakout rooms and they read or practice the play with puppets. They go into the breakout rooms and work on any of their language manipulation activities. And I know you know what they are as a name teacher, choisis le bon mot, mais les mots en ordre, um, question totale, question partielle, phrase bizarre, mais les phrases en ordre, and, and so on. And you can pop in and watch the groups, as I mentioned before, to assist them. So as I mentioned before, um, uh, you want to make sure that the students are using the target language only. One of the things you could do is to have them record the discussion on their phones. But ideally, if you're in Zoom, you can have them record the discussion. And uh, locally, they would have to record it locally to their computer and uh, not to the cloud because it can only, we can only have the main session um, uh, recorded to the cloud. So they would record it locally and then send it to you. So we have oral uh, interaction ideas in addition to the basic AIM activities that you can do in breakout rooms as well. You can uh, perhaps have the students do a game once they're familiar with the AIM activities. So you could, on Google Slides, uh, just as we would in class, in the AIM uh, appendix, you have different um, uh, cards with 
of the many monarch words, you could also put these on a slide. And so I have an example slide here um, that you can have a look at. Um, and it simply has on each slide a series of different sentences. And they can be the same sentences. For, and the groups are named. Group one has this slide. Group two has this slide. Group three has this slide. And then the first group to finish and put all the words in order and write them out underneath in the comment box below um, is the one who might win something. That group will be the first one to do it. Um, one student could be the writer or each student could write one and they just write their name beside the, the sentence they, they wrote out. After two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, it depends on how many sentences you've given the kids. The one, the group that created the greatest number uh, of sentences correctly is the winner or has done the best job. And uh, you can also make the requirement uh, to illustrate as well um, as they do in their digital hard copy. So you can expand the requirement or reduce the requirement as you wish with your students, depending on how old they are, how much experience they have with AIM. You can also do exactly the same with Mele Frasanov. So you share a Google slide with the, all the different sentences, five sentences, 10 sentences, whatever you want. They have to write the sentences in order now below and um, you can share. Uh, they stay, uh, come back together and you can look at the, the entire uh, Google slide list and compare and decide which group did the best job. Same thing with les phrases bizarres les plus longues. You can share a Google slide and set a minimum requirement of 10 to 15 words per sentence. Uh, give three or five minutes to three, four or five minutes, however many minutes, not too many minutes because you want to make sure this is a really fast paced activity and the kids are pushed to do the best job they can um, in the minimum amount of time. You can say uh, require a certain number of sentences to be written in that, in that amount of time as I say, a minimum number of words per sentence, and the groups that write the most sentences, the longest sentences, the funniest sentences, whatever uh, you want sort of did the best job and they win something, um, some points for their group. Les mots qui vont ensemble, again, another activity that, that uh, AIM teachers that we love to do with the kids and they really love this as well. You give each group a different word or the same word on your Google Slides, you bring them back after a few minutes, and the group that completes the long, largest number of word associations did the best job. Complète la phrase et devine le mot, same thing. You give each group a different set of sentences on the Google slide link or the same set. Again, you can do whatever you wish. And the, the group that completes the largest number of complète la phrase, again, did the best job. And um, after this activity or after any activity for students who are stronger, you can ask them to create sentences or or um, words out of order for the activity. And then you can share those words with the students the following day. And, um, and so the kids are creating the methodology as well for a purpose. So one activity that I really love is Qu'est-ce que tu vois dans l'image? So this is something that we model with the kids beforehand. <clears throat> I always start with, a, with an image from the play so that's very familiar. And then the students have to, um, uh, describe writing je vois and then what they see in the image and then they they write a series of sentences below so you can send out again another set of google slides and underneath the image in the, in the space below they write as many sentences as they can describing and you can say they have to write a, a sentence a minimum 10 words long whatever you would like to do and the students then write out their sentences in this limited amount of time and then you collect all the sentences at the end, they come back and you'll see, just as in the other activities, all of the, the slides and all of the words that, and sentences that the kids have written. Um, you can read a story together from an AIM reader or any reader. We have all our digital uh, e-readers, of course. You can project those, share your screen. <clears throat> and you can create, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a set of the same or different discussion questions um, with the students and work on those with them as well. So you can also, as I mentioned, have students uh, for the other activities, you can have students create their own 
total and partial questions based on this uh, um, this reader. So you can take one uh, image from the reader and have students on their Google Slides create different questions for that um, particular image, bring them all back, and then gesture those questions for the whole class to respond to. Um, you uh, can use uh, the activity Daily Image, which my students absolutely love, um, showing different images from the play or readers, and then um, they write a paragraph describing this image. And again, you can compare the descriptions that different groups wrote and um, taking those descriptions and comparing them to have a discussion about why one description is, is perhaps better or, or what the good qualities of each description are, um, because it's very important as a lead up to uh, story retelling that we teach students how to describe effectively and what things we can add to our descriptions. So very important beforehand, though, to do a lot of modeling around this with your kids, if you haven't done it before, especially. So um, uh, you can co-create success criteria if you want to vote on the, the best version of the description of the same image. <clears throat> so these activities are all found in the digital workbooks as well. And you can uh, have the kids do this during their, week, uh, part, their uh, breakout groups. Uh, writing them out in their digital workbooks as well, uh, in addition to if perhaps you want to give them Google Slides. So either way, it's possible for them to complete their digital workbook online with a partner um, during this, these breakout group times. Um, you can step up the uh, requirement by working on images that are unknown to the students. Um, perhaps there's some vocabulary that they don't know as well so you can review that beforehand and then they can get into their description um, of, of the image that isn't directly taken from the play. Another activity that I love to do uh, in the in with my kids and that could easily be done in breakout rooms as well after you've modeled is corrige les erreurs. So you can give a series of sentences that aren't that have one or more errors in them and they're purpose is to identify the error and then describe the correction and then identify any règlement wrap that apply. And I've included a Google slide here where, that you can look at um, and uh, you'll see the different sentences and how the students would correct them below. Um, again, just like all the other activities that they could be doing in their breakout groups in their digital workbook, I do hope that you will also model uh, retelling with your kids online and that the, the students will work on this online together um, in their digital workbooks together. They can order the different images. Um, they can, uh, by clicking on the images in their digital workbook, they can place them in order and then do an oral retelling together with a partner. And um, eventually, of course, they can do them in writing. Uh, individually at the end of every kit. Of course, we want every student to uh, film themselves doing a, a retelling of the an oral, uh, re like oral story retelling of the story that you've been working on. Um, uh, they would record this typically on their phone, but they can also do it through Flipgrid and upload it through Flipgrid. So, um, and so you can have all of their um, recordings there for other students in the class to look at and comment upon as well. Um, if this isn't possible, you can have students upload to Vimeo you can, and send that way. You can have them send it to you by WeTransfer. There are many different ways for students to share their videos with you. And they should be approximately, well, it usually ends up being 10 to a little bit more than 10 minutes long. And this is one student here who uploaded hers to Flipgrid. A socialized story on de Marco and Magda. Marta is muy arguloso y piensa que él es el mejor Marco del mundo. Marco no es una buena persona porque él no ayuda a las personas no importantes, solamente a las personas importantes. Marco lleva un ropa, una ropa larga, 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 
y azul con hechas y lunas amarillas. So um, what you can see here is the student in paper form had the, um, the different images in front of her and she was using that as a guide to lead her through the story retelling. Some students use that, some students don't. Um, but uh, yeah, so she, it was, it, they usually end up being somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes long that the kids are, are um, retelling the entire story for you. Now you don't need to listen to the whole story, of course, but um, certainly you will get a wonderful um, insight into the student's proficiency level, their ability, as you can see here, the student was really thinking about the agreement, if you speak Spanish, speaking, thinking about the agreement of the adjectives to the noun. Um, that was lovely to see. <clears throat> so um, that's one thing that you can do at the end of the kit, and I do highly recommend that, that every student add um, um, their video to their digital or other, course, some type of uh, student portfolio. You can follow them through exactly. the years. So Flipgrid looks like this. The students add their, um, have their, their videos here and comments and feedback can be made as well. Yes. Um, okay, so, and as I mentioned, of course, um, continuing on beyond the oral retelling that I would recommend you have students do with different partners, they should, um, of course, complete their retelling in their digital workbook um, with their partner, of course, discussing as they write um, online. And if you're into the uh, second kit and above, qu'est-ce qui se passe après will also happen following the um, retelling in writing and orally. I highly recommend that if you have um, your students do their, re their extensions, please, please consider them, uh, uh, consider having them uh, write for a, a real purpose, which would be to enter the AIM publishing contest. You can have an internal publishing contest, uh, sort of student publishing contest where they publish their books with the AIM uh, book publishing pages or other pages or digital online uh, books that they can create. <clears throat> so uh, have students vote on the best five and maybe send those five into the AIM book publishing contest. And the teacher whose uh, class wins uh, the contest receives a kit and uh, the, of course the authors and illustrators receive recognition as author illustrator officially published um, and also of course receive their payment. So you, when you're working um, in breakout rooms and partner group activities, you may design, design any series of questions or topics of course. These were just ideas. Um, and I'm sure you have others that you would like to use with your students. It's easy to assign and just say, go off and do your work alone in your digital workbook. But it is so important to ensure as much as possible that students have the opportunity to work, not in isolation, but with partners online. And um, so I hope you will consider and that you will try these options for interactions, especially if you have students that you've been working with for a while uh, with AIM and who are familiar with those partner group activities, hopefully you can have them do that online a little bit. Um, I hope this was of some use to you. Um, I know you have many, many more activities and I'm sure much more experience than I do working online with students, but uh, um, hope you found this of interest and uh, good luck this year, everyone. I know this is a challenging time and I hope, uh, well, I hope it won't be too, too difficult for you and that uh, perhaps some wonderful things will come of it and some new ideas and uh, some creativity will uh, occur as a result of something that's a little challenging for all. So um, best of luck this year, everyone, and I hope you keep in touch with us at AIM here. We'd love to hear any ideas, any and all ideas that you have um, and, uh, we look forward to keeping in touch. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.